I am Megan and I'm going to sort of be introducing everyone and as I'll introduce you if you'd like to come up and say a few words and then we'll go on to the next person. Okay, so we are now live. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Um, so we're hosting this webinar to give everyone a deeper insight into the course that the FBA are providing along with the benefits and opportunities that everyone will gain from it. So please remember everyone to comment below if you have any questions along the way and we'll be answering them at the end. So first up we have David Goldblatt, um, who is a history and political um, economy professor for the FBA. David is probably the most recognised football historian on the planet, as well as an award winning author and journalist at many major organisations such as the BBC and the Times. So please welcome David. Oh, well, thank you very much. Very lovely to be here. Um, and it's just really nice to like make contact with all the folks and make it human rather than just digital. Um, I'm teaching a course on the history of football and I teach on a course on the political economy of football. Um, and what use might that be to an aspiring person in the football industry? And I would remind you of what they sing to Chelsea Football Club in England these days, and you'll forgive my language. The crowd sings, shit club, no history. And I can't think of any other realm of popular culture in which the absence of historical knowledge should be so denigrated. I mean, as a historian, it's absolutely amazing to be in an industry, in a place where history is a source of economic value, social meaning, cultural significance. And so anybody who wants to work, I think, in the football business needs to understand the history of the game and how the accumulated meanings and narratives of clubs and nations and players have solidified and been created over the years. And that's what gives meaning to football today, it makes it more than just three points, it makes it more than just a ball in the back of the net. Of course, I can't teach and I don't intend to try and teach every last detail of the history of football. My um, vision of the kind of teaching I do is to offer, first of all, a road map. It's a very big and complicated road, so I'm just offering, here are the main areas that you should have a think about. Secondly, to encourage students to take control of their own learning to say, here's the whole history of world football, you can't know it all, what's useful to you? How can you make history part of what you do? So to take card control and to own it. But above all, I'm in the business of stimulating curiosity, because that's the skill that I would want people to go away with, is to ask the right side kind of questions of what goes on in football today from a historical background. I mean, certainly, when I go to a football game and I have my history hat on or my sociology hat on, I have a kind of checklist of maybe two or three hundred questions that I'm thinking about every time I walk into a football stadium. I think about where am I, what's the social class of where we are, what's the economic model, are there many men here, are there women, what's the ethnic break makeup of the crowd, what's the architecture, how does this shape the way in which the crowd is performing? And again, I can't teach everybody all of those questions, but I want to nurture that questioning attitude and the capacity to bring historical knowledge and knowledge from the social sciences to bear on very practical questions in the organisation and the running of football. I also hope um, my students will have enormously good fun. I hope it will open them many, many windows on many parts of the world. Um, I'll just say in closing, um, one of the great joys of studying football for me is, uh, as a comparative sociologist, is um, you want something that's the same everywhere and yet different everywhere. And football offers that extraordinary opportunity to people's intellect and people's imagination is to enter into hundreds of other social worlds and understand why football means so much in those places. And if I send students away with that kind of curiosity and some of the intellectual armory to ask those questions, I will be well pleased at any rate. Okay, thank you very much, David. I'm now going to introduce you to Alexandra Mestre, who specialises in law, ethics and professionalism in football and is considered by the International Business Sport magazine as one of the 20 most influential sports lawyers in the world. Alexandra is also a professor and will now talk us through the modules. Please welcome Alexandra. <laughs> Hello, 
Hi everybody. Uh, it's very difficult to to speak after David. Uh, I'm going to be really brief. Um, in the in the first speeches, they were talking about uh, getting uh, theory into practice. Uh, that's what I'm trying to to do in my in uh, this topic, uh, law of football, uh, of football, as well as uh, ethics and professionalism. Uh, I'll try to bring a little bit of my experience. Um, I'm a, I'm a sports lawyer since to. 2003, so I have that uh, practical experience to work in a law firm, not only a big law firm but also a small law firm, to deal with clients, what are their needs, um, what are the practical cases that uh, emerge in the football industry. I will try to bring some examples, practical examples, because I think that nowadays students do need not only theory but also they really are passionate about practical cases. We're going to be analyzing uh, all the, um, the media uh, cases. So I'm going to, to bring this practice uh, of a sports lawyer uh, in, the, in this uh, approach. Apart from, it, from, from that, I also think that it's important when you're facing uh, not only law of football, but also uh, ethics and professionalism in the football area. My experience when I was a member of the group that drafted the, the Arnaud report in 2006, I had the experience to, to work with uh, during three months with the main stakeholders and with the Champagne was also uh, there, um, very important for the, the final work. Um, so I'm going to bring a little bit my, my experience in this relationship with the stakeholders, uh, governance, uh, compliance and all the links with, uh, with, with football. Um, I think it's very important for, also for the students to have the idea of drafting regulations. When we interpreting uh, regulations, we must think what was the rationale of the legislator. And I was myself a legislator. I would try also to, to bring that, um, that approach, that, uh, that experience. Both law and football and ethics and professionalism are um, very closed. And I give you the example of the ethics uh, questions in football. Uh, corruption. Uh, doping, violence, uh, match fixing. All of these can, uh, can be practical examples for, for the classes. Uh, Stefan will, uh, will help me also in this uh, task and uh, I cannot promise to open so many, so many doors and windows all around but uh, you always have uh, a friend and a colleague to speak uh, in Portugal and, and all around. Thank you. Alexandre. Now we have Mai Cruz Blanco, an FBA professor in women's development and leadership in football. As a strong advocate towards equality for all, Mai has been heading the women's football development department at FIFA for over nine years. Please welcome Mai. Hello everyone. I'm really pleased to be here today and speaking colleagues, the professors, but also speaking to all the students out there in the world that want to be part of the FBA. I think one of the biggest values of this project is actually that it's an independent project and that we will be able to be creative. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we could see today in women's football. And I had the great honor and uh, the great luck to be in the journey of women's football development for almost 10 years within FIFA. I've learned a lot and I've seen a great potential of the women's game. I think it's still yet to be explored. So I'm hoping that the students in, within the FBA program will actually look into this. And I'm gonna be challenging all of you to see the business side of women's football. And I believe there is a great potential in the women's game and I really hope that we can, we can really challenge the status quo. On the leadership perspective, I'll be uh, really looking at, into the leadership landscape of football. Again, we'll be challenging you to have your plan. What do you want to be in the next 10 years as a leader in football? What are your, your main goals? I think, personally, uh, football needs uh, really great leaders um, for the future, creative leaders, innovative leaders that challenge also the status quo. So I'm really hoping that the students that are coming to the FBA program will have that big goal in their mind to be the greatest leaders of the future. So really looking 
forward to having students that think bold, that want to make change happen, and that, first of all, really believe in equality. I'm really a big supporter of equality, and equality is not just about women. It's about all of us. It's about humanity, and I think we all should defend that. So really looking forward to meeting the students in the future and looking forward to getting in touch with all of you that are interested in the FBA, in women's football, and in leadership development. Thank you very much for those insights, May. Um, the former head of international relations at FIFA and recent candidate for the FIFA presidency, Jerome Champagne, specializes in football governance. Jerome, if you could please tell the viewers about the module and what they can expect from it. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone. Let's build the future of football. Which kind of football do we want in the 21st century? In football, a lot of other industries, the globalization has been amazing. A lot, a lot more players playing football from uh, the coast of California to China, from the Middle East to Europe. But look also at the problems the globalization has created for football all around the world, like in other areas, in de decline of competitiveness of competitions, growing imbalances. So for you students who are going to join the FBA, you have to answer these questions. But we are here in this course to give you the tools to understand, to open new doors, to challenge your thinking, but also to govern the game for the, for the years to come. Personally, I've, I've had two passions in my, in my life, two balls, the football on the one side, the ball itself, and the planet. The issues of governance in football are the confluence of these two issues, of these two balls. That's why you will join the FBA, and that's why we'll try to help you as much as possible to help you to run football and to build it in the future. It's not a simple issue. You have read the media recently, you're following the controversies. It's not an easy thing. Governing football is not only running the ball, teaching kids, signing contracts of players. It's apprehending the world through the game, apprehending the world through the organization of the leagues, having a feeling and also a lot of emotions. Running a club is not about paying players a lot of money and winning titles. It's about building the next generation. That's why governing the game is so important. And that's why it will be important and a pleasure for me to join you, the students, to build football for the future. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you for that talk on football governance. Um, next up, we have Dennis Tom, the fan engagement professor. Former Sport 5, Dennis has been heading the marketing division of one of the best example clubs in regards to fan engagement. Please welcome Dennis. Thank you very much. Uh, well, first of all, um, I wasn't sure if this green is actually matching this FBA design. Um, thank you very much to the FBA, a very young team, passionate and um, a very professional way of doing it. So thank you very much. I think this, you are incredible hosts. Um, and well, I was actually preparing something, but I totally dismissed it because I, I'm overwhelmed by all the experience we have. It's like 30 nationalities around the dinner table um, this lunch and it's a, it's a quite unique experience for me as well um, but it's pretty much the same as in sports because sports is like a 24-7 treatment of, of rolling news, of trivia, of, of drama, of having snackable beats, um, bits and pieces of media and uh, behind the scenes snippets, that's what we are talking about. Um, so, but at the, at the same time, the, the average attention of people uh, is less than the average attention of a goldfish. It's less than nine seconds. So you need to match this attention right in that second. So fan engagement, and especially digital fan engagement, is getting more important. And at the same time, you need um, to use all the incredible amount of instruments and um, kind of ways you can do it because there are so many of them but you need to do it in a creative manner and in a really really um, in a manner that you can actually count what you do because you need to be very efficient but at the same time and that's really um, um, one of the most important things to me to get aware of the fact that we are in a sports industry still in the sports industry and we will always be in this industry so Please 
be aware of the fact that we have fans. We need to engage fans and not consumers. That's a totally different approach of communicating, of setting up um, a, an engagement strategy. So you are trying to transform fans to customers eventually when they buy a ticket, when they buy a jersey, but you are not like a fast-moving consumer good as in trying to transform the customer to a fan. That's what every other brand on the world is doing. So you need to do it differently and then you, have, you might have uh, success and that's what we do in our course. Um, we're setting up a real, like a real pitch project. We will do it hands-on. Uh, I'm not a professor, thanks for that, but I'm, I'm really, um, I'm, a, I'm a guy from doing it hands-on, but we'll have fun, hopefully more than in your course, David. <laughs> so uh, thanks again, I'm looking forward, and um, thanks. Thank you so much, Dennis. The next professor, Alfonso Ribeiras, specialises in sponsorship and partnership and internationalisation of football modules. As the former head of the commercial division of Real Madrid, Alfonso took the challenge of starting up his own agency, Mabel Sports. Unfortunately, Alfonso can't be here with us today, but he has left a kind message for the FBA family. So we're going to have a look at it now. Hi, everybody. Okay, it's been a pity for me not having the chance to be with all of you in these days here in Geneva. But um, Football Business Academy is really amazing for everyone that joins us in this program. The new course is going to start very soon, and this is after the summer. And really, it's going to be amazing for many reasons. We will take you inside the football industry from many different aspects. I will be in charge of showing you the business in this industry. Football generates amazing audience, football fans. And we need to make professionalism above, above, apart from this. So, sponsorships, friendly matches and tours, managing players' image endorsements, to advise brands to where to make the investment to achieve their goals is our challenge. I invite you to follow us to join the new, new business course. Um, nice to see you very soon. Thank you. Bye. So after a corporate career at Reebok and Adidas, our next professor, Dan Wood, became a true entrepreneur. With both failures and successes, Dan went on and started up the Football Freestyle Federation, which is now a well-developed and sustainable federation. Please welcome Dan. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. I'm here primarily to challenge everyone's thought process and to, to get people to start to think a bit differently um, and also to have some fun. Fun has been mentioned a few times so I think uh, for me personally uh, fun and the notion of play which is I do believe lost in a lot of football at the moment uh, evokes confidence, it, evokes, it, it promotes ideas and entrepreneurialism. Um, a very short speech from me but I've got three kind of mantras or uh, notions to, to leave with you as thought starters. Uh, the first one being that all you need is a ball. The football industry is so powerful, it's so huge, but at the end of the day it's all about this, this one common object which unites everyone. Uh, from the streets to the stadia, we're going to be thinking differently about how you can engage with football at different, different levels. The second one being uh, where there's rules, there's rebels. So rules are there to be broken, in my opinion, and, uh, and we're going to look differently about how football is structured and what other ideas can be, can be born from that. Uh, and third of all, there are two billion estimated fans or consumers, however you look at it, uh, in football in the world, and not two of those people are identical. So that, for me, promotes an idea that you can create so many different things at any given time in different markets. So yeah, we're going to look at the whole football industry in different, different levels from streets to stadia and have some fun. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Our next professor has had an extremely exciting experience. As a former Olympic athlete for Switzerland, Alexander Koch has headed the corporate communication department of FIFA for a decade. Alexander will be speaking about the media and communication in football module. Please welcome Alexander. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, you can uh, believe that I wasn't at the Olympics in football, and I never played football that made my life in FIFA a little bit more interesting. But coming from a sport where actually communication was a big issue because nobody is interested in rowing, that was my bad experience. I then started to work in the um, in the sports marketing industry at ISL and uh, in the athletics department. And athletics is a relatively famous sport, but still has nothing to do with football. So in athletics, when we launched campaigns or when we wanted to get a message across, we did it the normal way that probably most of the other sports are doing. And then by coincidence, I joined the football department and all of a sudden communication was so easy. Everything was easy. We created a mascot for the World Cup in Germany and every newspaper wrote about the mascot. We didn't have to worry about how to promote it. Everything was easy. But now, since I worked in FIFA, communication wasn't always easy. As you remember, there was a big crisis. And all of a sudden, the same power that could be in your favor uh, was against us. And that is probably the, the experience I would value the most, uh, or I would consider the most valuable, to having to communicate about the normal business that FIFA does, and that is good, was good, and still is good, in times where our credibility was pretty much at zero. So everybody was against us and we still had to get uh, a message across about what we are doing and to also correctify a little bit the wrong um, images or the wrong news about uh, FIFA. So how did we do it? Uh, we focused on internal communications, we focused on media work and um, and we did campaigns and all of that. So it's a vast spectrum and I would like to share with the students all of these experiences with the bad experience and the good experience. So maybe one day you will be in a similar situation where the wind is behind you and, and pushes you or where the wind is against you. And I think that's pretty good to know, to have seen both sides. That will be the main areas of my course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you to all the FBA professors who have talked us through their modules. And we're now going to move on to the guest lectures at the FBA, who will be providing inspiring industry insights to all the students watching. Our first guest lecturer is Luis Vicente. Luis started his career managing sport talent, working with famous stars such as Luis Figo, Ronaldo Nazario, and Andriy Shevchenko, and then switched to become an expert in sports technology and digital transformation. Luis is a firm believer that sports are on the verge of a global disruptive cycle led by technology. Luis will tell us all about marketing, digital era, entrepreneurship and innovation. So thank you everyone. So uh, I think, uh, first of all, it's a big pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm one of the guys that probably are going to have a lot of fun uh, because as Jerome said, you know, we need to build the future of football together. But, uh, the opportunity we're going to give to you is actually to be part of that because the truth about our sport actually could be a lot better and the opportunity is actually the younger generations uh, my generation we build this sport to actually become the biggest sport in this planet probably the biggest community in this planet but we have not done a perfect job so i think you know having you know young blood having you know all of you joining us and probably trying to uh, start from a base where you are not so blocked by the same principles that our sport has always been been uh, blocked by I think it's a massive opportunity so first of all is understanding the power of the community we represent but it's also understanding the changes that we need to do because it might be that in 10 years time if our sport doesn't change if all of you doesn't help us changing our sport it might be not anymore the biggest sport in the world we live in a world where globalization has brought massive change but also a generational shift has brought massive change technology you know got us you know very very close wherever we go and we are probably not doing the job we have to do in terms of understanding how we need to get together and you know tell the story of our sport you know for a younger generation that is not necessarily you know attracted by the same things our my generation was so i'm trying to bring you a lot of examples from my lifetime good ones and bad ones but also giving you the ammunition and giving you the weapons 
to come to this port, you know, to actually engage with this unbelievable opportunity that FPA can give to you, to actually come and change it, because that's what I think we can all together do. So it will be an immense pleasure. Thank you very much, and uh, please join us. Thank you very much, Luis. Next up, I'd like to introduce you to Stefano Malvestio, who specializes in law and football. Stefano is an expert in dispute resolution for the bodies of FIFA, as well as in the Court of Arbitration for Sports. Now Stefano works for one of the most renowned legal firms in football. Please welcome Stefano. Thanks a lot. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here and uh, to see such an exciting uh, project starting off with a group of friends, uh, colleagues and great people. And it's, uh, it's great to see that this is coming from uh, the, the young people and of course have, uh, have already a lot of experience in the field. But that is one of the reasons why I'm very excited to be on board. Uh, in my experience, uh, well, Professor Maestro already talked uh, about a little bit uh, the importance of law in nowadays football. Uh, as far as my particular practice is concerned, we're a lot involved uh, in transfers all around the world. Uh, we've been involved uh, in some of the major transactions in football during the last years. And uh, I have to say I had the chance to negotiate uh, contract deals, arrangements with the main clubs uh, all around the world, especially in Europe. Uh, I, can, uh, I can name a few ones, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Liverpool, Milan, Paris Saint-Germain, uh, Olympique Marseille. Uh, this is because the law firm where, uh, where I'm based in, in Rio operates at a very high, uh, high level with some very uh, outstanding uh, Brazilian uh, players mostly. So this experience uh, gave me a lot in terms of uh, what I could see in, uh, in the different uh, legal systems and different practices all around the world. We also acted in many emerging markets because, as you might know, Brazilian players uh, go all around the world. So we have, uh, I had the chance also of, of uh, working a lot with China, with the Middle East, with the US, with Mexico. And our, our job there as lawyers is uh, kind of to make sure that everything goes smoothly, which is not always an easy task. Uh, those of us, as Professor Meister, that are involved in this practice know there are some particular risky jurisdictions, and that's where we come in. And uh, I, I will give the students a little bit of, uh, of this experience, uh, of the insights, as far as we are allowed to do uh, in our capacity of lawyers. Of course, uh, not, things not always uh, go properly and sometimes legal, issue, uh, legal issues arise or sometimes clubs, players, agents do their jobs without involving you. And so that is when you get to the litigation part of, the, of our work, which is actually also very exciting. Uh, it's great to be uh, here in Switzerland, actually, because it's, it is where everything at the end of the day comes, uh, comes to an end. Uh, the Court of Arbitration for Sports uh, is a few kilometers from here, and uh, UEFA, FIFA, that is where we, we, we normally act. And as, as some of you, I, was also, uh, I also entered the sports uh, business through a course. And uh, so I understand really what the students expect. And I think that for what I saw today, I, I'm pretty sure that the FBA can, can comply with these demands of the students, combining excellent uh, theoretical and academical experience from the professors, but as well the, the practical experience. All the people that are here are not just uh, academic people having a chair at some university, but as people that we, we met daily in the, in the football market. And that is why I think that uh, the students really have a great opportunity to be involved in this. Uh, and uh, for what I can say, I had internships in this world is really the best way to, to get into the, the football business. And so I think that uh, the fact that the FBA offers this opportunity is really outstanding. And I, I am very excited to be here. The organization is, is perfect. I thank all the 
all the staff for taking care of us and I'm sure we will do the same thing with with all the students that will uh, enroll in this course so good luck and, and let's start uh, working thank you very much Stefano next up as head of the legal uh, um, the legal department at the European Professional Football Leagues Ornella Bellia has a vast experience working with legal affairs and football. Ornella will now tell us more about the football governance. Give a warm welcome to Ornella. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody and the students that are following us in this webinar. It's really a great pleasure to be here today and to be part of this great family. To be very frank, guest lecturer at other course master in several countries in Europe, but what makes this course so special is the enthusiasm and the passion that all the people involved bring to this uh, program. That's why I'm so excited to start this journey with you. As head of legal of the EPFL, that maybe, more, maybe many of you from the, the students don't, are not very familiar with the European the Association of European Professional Football Leagues is an association comprising leagues from all around Europe, including the, Euro the English Premier League, the Spanish La Liga, the German Bundesliga, and so on, but also many uh, small leagues around Europe. And as a fellow leader, I can tell you that it's never easy to deal with so different needs, so different uh, requests from so different countries and leagues and um, economic background. So the football um, industry is quite a very difficult one. It's not easy to get familiar with all these different uh, backgrounds, so it's quite a, um, a, a tough job, but I, I can tell you that it's the most exciting thing that can happen to all of you working this uh, exciting uh, this exciting sector so I'm really um, I'm really looking forward to, to meet all of you to share my experience with you um, not only as a professional but uh, but also as a young woman working in football I can tell you that it's not this at all but for those women that are following this webinar, uh, I really think that you also can make it, so I'm really looking forward to meet all of you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Onela. Last, but certainly not least, our final guest lecturer will be giving us some insights into club management. A senior manager at the European Club Association, Olivier Carros has worked in the football industry for nearly 10 years, specialising himself in the field of club governance. Please welcome... Thank you. Hello, well, welcome uh, to everyone, the uh, lecturers, speakers, uh, scientific, etc. And of course, the webinar students who are following us. We are talking about uh, an academic platform, uh, kind of a university, but in the end, you will have to read something, you will have to read a book. But actually, this is not a book, it's a guide. Uh, and you have to see it as a guide, uh, so like almost like a touristic um, exercises when you travel somewhere, you know what you expect to see, but you don't necessarily know what you would like to see. Uh, this is what is about football, and there was a time when uh, clubs, or football clubs, they only used to win on the pitch. It's still true in some countries, but in reality, football has changed dramatically. Uh, a lot of opportunities, a lot of challenges, a lot of threats also. Uh, we have uh, globalization, we have digitalization, we have esports, etc. So uh, it's a very uh, complex world. And I think I still have a, an issue by saying we, we are in the industry of football. I think Ornella said the, the right word I was looking for several years the sector. Uh, but in reality, is, um, it's very important to understand the mechanics, uh, to understand how it works on the top. But also, in the end, people working in the football industry, they are working uh, 724. And this is a very exciting uh, sector, but also very extremely demanding. And I think it's sometimes very complicated to grasp all the um, challenges and difficulties of the football, uh, football world, and especially football clubs. 
Uh, I think it's um, very important to, to, to have this knowledge through a platform like uh, FBA that provides uh, together with networking session but also with uh, webinars etc um, and uh, it's very important also to um, to have a nice mic <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to say that uh, uh, we have to now it's gonna be fixed for the for September <laughs> Actually, it will not be here. So, uh, to say that um, with uh, with the course, I'd like to, to give it to you is to provide you a, an helicopter view of how a football club works. There are legal items, there are infrastructure items, there are a lot of different elements, and of course, one thing which is very important also the background of the club, the sociology, the history, etc. So, football is an emotional business, but it requires. Uh, certain tools. Uh, last but not least, um, was a lot we are talking now in football at European Club Association, and only uh, about sustainability in our in our sector. And I think uh, if we like to change our um, sector, we really have to plant the seeds today to have uh, the future trees in the future. So we hope you will be able to be uh, part of those. So thank you very much, and looking forward to meet you very soon in Manchester. Thank you very much to all of our guest lectures. We will now move on to introduce the FBA's partners, who will be telling us a bit more about how they support the FBA. First, we've got Phil Gagan. Phil is the general manager at SoccerX, the global leader for football business and a strategic partner of the FBA. Phil, if you would like to tell us a bit about the partnership between the FBA and SoccerX. Uh, hello, and again, it's, it's a pleasure to meet everyone in the room and everyone who's watching around the world. Um, as Megan said, I'm the general manager of SoccerX. Um, I see a number of attendees, partners, and colleagues, past and present, of SoccerX in the room. So this is mainly for the people at home. Um, SoccerX is the global leader for the business of football in providing networking platforms. So for the last 20 years, we've done a lot of what the FBA is planning to do in driving professionalism, learning, uh, development of football. We've been doing that in a face-to-face -face environment. In countries around the world and especially with three of the founders of the FBA being <coughs> previous uh, colleagues of mine at SoccerX, it's a pleasure to see this and we see the benefit that this course can really bring to the industry. So what we'll be doing with the FBA is starting with the global convention this September. Uh, any students on the FBA will be attending our events which is a golden ticket to really build your network which was uh, previously elaborated on about it's a key part of how you really develop yourself as a, as a professional um, and then we'll also be doing it at other events around the world as the course develops and we'll be providing internships to FBA students who would wish to work for SoccerX and as the uh, three of the guys who work for the FBA will tell you it's, it's a good way to develop yourself as a professional but we're here to support the FBA in, in any way we can so we look forward to welcoming uh, students who make it onto the course to our event in September and then working with them throughout their careers. So, good luck. Thank you, Phil. Excellent opportunities at the FBA. Um, finally, we have Dimitri Hugen, the Managing Director of ESSMA, the leading platform for stadium stakeholders and a strategic partner of the FBA. Dimitri, please tell us about this exciting partnership. Thank you very much. First of all, it's a great pleasure being here on a Saturday afternoon. It's uh, impressive to see everyone in the room who uh, took the investment to come over to the, to the sunny Geneva and Switzerland. Since the early discussions with Durian and Christian, I must say everything felt right. Because everything what we see in the stadium business is that there certainly is a need for this kind of education. There is certainly a need for the combination of online courses, combination with internships and field visits. I think Socrates is a brilliant example of uh, everything of networking, knowledge and things you can learn in the industry. Um, with, uh, the, with the colleagues of ESMA, we will support with an online course about stadium management. 
it's a complex, state of a complex, but very um, important part, crucial part of our business. Without the right facility, with several interesting discussions during the lunch, without the right facility, we won't be able to serve the fans because they need the Gelbe Wand in Dortmund. They need the right tools to support the team and to really, to be, to really be passionate and to support how they can do and how they can move forward. It will be important to, inter to inform you about the strengths, what you need to do, how you can deliver and how you further can um, exploit the stadium and to move forward to the next step. Um, in addition, we will support with internships towards the 400 stadiums which are member of our association and we will organize three field trips a year in combination with the, uh, the flagship of our organization, the, uh, the ESMA Summit. So uh, we really look forward and, uh, to move forward on the stadiums and to see where we can support you or also can challenge the students in order to grow together about the cooperation and to bring the future of our business. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitri. We will now have a live question and answer session with questions that have come in through the webinar and that we've also received. Um, and I'm going to hand you over to Patrick, who will be answering all of your questions. Thank you, Megan. I'll be actually asking the questions from the students. Uh, we've received a lot of questions before the, the webinar. We've received some live as well. We'll be going through all of them. And uh, the questions can be directed to everybody here in the room, the professors, the lecturers, some of the admin staff. Uh, we are quite happy with the engagement of the people and the students interested with the, with the program who have been sending a lot of questions previously. I will start uh, with a question, more generic question for, for Dorian. Um, it is, is Sandra asking, is the program mainly targeted for people who already work in the industry or can someone from a different industry join? What makes the FBA course different from other courses of the same nature? If you can come here and answer that question. Okay, so um, first of all, how, if I understood well, what's the difference with another course, right? Okay. Well, um, Traditional courses, traditional master's degrees that you can find in traditional universities. Normally you will sit on a chair and you will have a teacher and someone that has maybe 20 years of academic experience, but not like uh, a practical experience and you will not have the hands on, on, the, on the field. So when we created the, the Football Business Academy, it was important to us to really mix and combine uh, this theoretical uh, approach but with teachers that have, as I said, 10 to 15 uh, years of experience in the field, but also with, with internships, with student business projects, field trips. And the, the, the main goal of this is to develop your network and your experience. How many times students have said that did a master have said, okay, um, I've, I tried to find a job, but they asked for one year ex of experience and they didn't have experience because they did a master. So the idea is that during one year, you, meet, you combine everything, every ingredients um, to, to really differentiate yourself and to create your network and to have experience. So that's make for me, and I think for the FBA, that is uh, Sandra the, from Colombia. The, I think the, the main difference with the traditional course, and that's what you, you get with the, the Football Business Academy. Sandra also asked if the, if the course is mainly targeted for people who already work in the industry or not. You've partly answered it, but the answer is obviously um, everybody can join the course. Uh, we, will, we have a mixture of people who've been involved with football before, but also with people that want to jump into, into football. They want to change industry, um, they want to work with their passion, they, they want to apply the skills that they're learning to an, from another industry into football, so the course is open to, to, to everybody. I'll continue with a, a question. This is a topic-related question for our professors. The first one goes to, to Mai. Uh, this is Juliana from Kazakhstan. I'd like to do a sports management program to pursue a career in promoting equal rights for women in sports. Will this course allow me to step into women's development in football? May if you don't mind joining here and answer to that. 
Well, thank you, Juliana, for the question. I think um, this course will be a fantastic opportunity for you or any woman, woman that wants to join uh, the football industry because it will not only give you an insight on women's football development specifically, but all, in all other areas that will really arm you with a lot of tools to be a very powerful uh, executive within the women's game. In our course for women's football development, we are going to look at the whole evolution of the women's game. We are going to look at the role of international organizations, which plays a very, very crucial role in terms of development uh, of women's football, but at the same time, the business side. And we're going to analyze why it hasn't been explored and how can we do it in the future. So certainly this will position yourself to be very well prepared to work in the women's game. And also we will be looking on the leadership side within the other course I will be teaching about how to lead yourself. And this is something very important within the football industry because we still don't have a great representation, a great female representation. If you look around the world, there's only 8% of executives that are female. So we more, but it's really important how we lead ourselves in a world of football. So leading self, leading others, and leading the organization will be part of the leadership course and will definitely make you a stronger, a stronger uh, executive within the world of football. Looking forward to meeting you. Thank you, Maya, for that answer. I think Edward has a, a live question from the chat. chat. Yes, uh, we have a question from Brian Besala, and this is uh, in regards to the online model. So the question I think Christian can answer is, uh, is it expected to be a full-time course? So uh, can you come in here and answer this question? Thank you. Uh, hi, Brian. Thanks for your question. Um, so regarding the online modules, um, the reason why we've created you know, two modules uh, for a total of five months online is so that you, know, you have a more natural transition into the course. Uh, and obviously, this will uh, result in more flexibility on your side. Um, thanks to our online platform, which we've been developing specifically for our students um, to make it as smooth as a, uh, a learning experience as possible. This will mean that for the majority of the time, uh, the time you can manage your time as you wish. Uh, each model, which will have around 20 to 25 hours per week worth of uh, academic involvement, um, most of which you can, you can obviously do um, on your own time, uh, minus the, the live sessions with, with the professors. So um, I think this is, uh, you know, in the modern day, very important for, for a lot of students um, to be able to combine maybe their work and, and their studies. Um, so if that answers your question, I think, um, yeah, I, I, hope, uh, I hope it did. Thank you, Christian. I have another topic-related question here. This is George from South Africa. Will we touch on crisis management on the communication class? Well, I guess Alexander can answer that. Yes. And maybe elaborate. <laughs> Thanks for the question. I'm glad you didn't ask if we're touching anything else other than crisis management. No, definitely. Crisis management is the key part of FIFA's communication over the last few years, so definitely, yes. Thank you, Alexander. I'll uh, send it again to Edward, who has another live question. Yes, and this is for Dorian. So the question is from Elliot Brown, and he wants to know what are the entry requirements for this course? Well, thank you, Elliot, for this question. Uh, the entry requirements are really easy. You need to have a bachelor degree, whatever you did, but you need to have this bachelor degree. You need to have a good level in, of English. Um, a good level means like 6.5 in IELTS or 80 in TOEFL. And you need to have a strong, strong uh, passion for football. The um, admission process is that you can go on our website, you, you, you drop all your files, then we will contact you, you will have two interviews, one with the administrative st uh, staff, and the second one with the teacher, and, um, and then, if everything goes well, you'll get, you'll get in. <laughs> Thank you. I'll continue with, uh, with the questions 
present from the from the from the interested students. I have one from Bader from the United Emirates, Arabic Emirates. I have a bachelor in international relations, and the idea of applying it into football is very tempting. What can we learn in the football governance class? Jerome, you touched on that. Maybe you want to expand a little bit more. Uh, good afternoon, Bada. I hope everything is okay in the Emirates. Uh, absolutely, we're going to touch, uh, to touch this because, uh, as you know, for nearly a little more than a century, it has been, uh, we have been living on the illusion that sport and politics uh, are not mixing. And uh, when I mean politics, is of course international relations. So definitely we're going to touch this issue because it's an illusion to believe that sport and politics and international relations do, mi do not mix. You live in a region today which is in the middle of a, of a very difficult uh, political and diplomatic crisis uh, between your countries and, and, and some of your neighbors. And uh, definitely we're going to touch this. And uh, as I said, it's my passion. Originally, uh, before I joined FIFA, I was a career diplomat. I served in countries, one very close to yours, which is Oman. And uh, also I worked in the organization of the World Cup in 98 in France. So, Sport and politics are absolutely mixed, and uh, sport and international relations, of course, as well. So, welcome to the course, and uh, we will discuss uh, the Arab Gulf. Uh, Arab Gulf. Masalama shukrani lalika. Thank you very much, Aaron. We have a very technical academic. Um, does this program provide credits, and are these credits transferable to another program? For example, can I use the credit I get from the FBA to complete my MBA in Boston. This is from Gary from the USA. Juan, as part of the academic board, would you like to answer that? That's Gary. Uh, hello, Gary. Thanks for asking. Uh, the program will deliver CTS credits, 60 CTS credits, along the different modules, which corresponds to grossly 1,500 hours of, uh, of education. These credits will have to be recognized by the master you want to apply on later. This is down really to the university. Uh, it is a particular program, it's a professional oriented program, and uh, the objective of it is to have it very aligned with the need of the, of, the, of the industry. Which means that depending on the kind of program you will be applying in, in, in Boston, it will be uh, down to the university or down to the program leader in Boston to see whether or not part of uh, all of these credits can be transferred. I'm, I'm confident, and if you need more info or in your process of applying after the FBA uh, master program to another program abroad, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, uh, to support and to support your application. Hope this helps. Thank you very much, Juan. Now we have a question coming from Brazil. Eduardo, I work in a football club in Brazil. I have two questions. Can I use my current job to do the mandatory internship? I don't know if my club will let me do the physical part of the program in Geneva for the last module. In the case not, would it be able to skip it? Christian, would you like to answer that question? <laughs> Bom dia, Eduardo. Muito um, prazer. So, just to answer in English for, for obviously the other students that are watching, um, it's very great that you've identified this, this course uh, probably as a platform to advance your career in the football industry. So, uh, congratulations on, on that. Um, then, regarding to your first question, um, definitely if, if you're already working in the football industry and you prefer to stay on with your current organization, uh, that's definitely possible. We can uh, always validate those credits towards the internship uh, module. Um, so that's definitely not a problem. And then the second part uh, regarding the physical module in Geneva, which is a two months, uh, it is mandatory. Um, it's a very crucial part of, of the um, One, because it's gonna be the, 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 the physical, the face-to-face -face one. There's gonna be a lot of important uh, workshops and sessions. Um, we will do the field trips. Uh, we will do obviously the student business project, which is a, a key element of this uh, education. Um, so it's definitely mandatory. Um, but maybe you can talk to to your boss at the club. Um, obviously, explain them uh, or her that the, uh, that you want to make this investment into your career and bringing back this knowledge and experience back to your club 
in order to be able to, to bring new ideas to the club and, and new strategies, whatever the case. Or maybe even, um, you know, um, they will suggest to, to co-finance this, this program for you. So I hope this answers your question and I'm uh, looking forward to see it. Thank you, Christian. Obrigado, Eduardo, pela pergunta. Another topic-related question. Uh, we have friends from Germany. Um, what level of difficulty can we expect from the low classes? I would ask maybe uh, Alexandre Mestri, our main professor for, for the law module, to, to answer that question. And maybe if Ornella or Stefano, who introduced themselves before, want to expand on it, you're welcome to join. Law classes will be very, extremely difficult, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> no, of course, um, if you're in the industry, and we had this example of ECA, ECA management, you, you must know the basics uh, of law. Not only national law, but also international law. Uh, you must be prepared to face, um, to face institutional slash legal uh, questions that arise, arise every day. If you're a manager of, uh, of sport, you must know something about uh, the, the legal questions. Um, and legal questions are something that arrive every day. You want to, dr to, to, to draft a contract, uh, you want to, to challenge a decision uh, in front of uh, a court or a jurisdictional organ in your country or abroad, you must be prepared for that. But of course we're going to, to give you the tools, um, uh, the skills, in order to know in which you must find the right place. Law is not to, to know everything in your mind, it's just to know what is the right direction, and I'm sure we, the three of us, can, uh, can lead you to, the, to that final result. Stefano, would you like to add something? I think that answer. Perfect. Thank you, Alicia. We continue with the question from Panagiotis from Luxembourg. Can you provide us with some examples of the companies where the internships will take place? What will be the application and selection process? This is a question for a partnership director, Christian. Maybe if you want to invite us also one of our partners to enter that question with you. Hello, Panagiotis. Thanks for your question. Um, the important thing um, that we wanted to implement in the internship model is to, first of all, before that model starts, to give you a perspective of how big this football industry is, right? Um, I think maybe a lot of people, um, you know, when they think of working in football, they say, oh, I want to work for Manchester, I want to work for Madrid, because it's my favorite club. Uh, while in reality, there's so many other types of organizations, clubs, leagues, suppliers, whatever the case, uh, which work in this industry, through which you can also, you know, enter this industry, get some really nice skills and experience, contacts, and then move forward. Um, so the types of organizations that you'll be able to do internships with are going to be very um, varied. Clubs, leagues, uh, as I said, agencies, federations, whatever the case. And then the se selection process is, is basically based on a matchmaking process. Um, so we want to make sure that, obviously on one hand, you as a student get the best experience possible, learn skills relevant to you. Um, and then on the other hand, equally important that the partner obviously has a strategic um, benefit from having you uh, with them, right? Um, so the process will be like this. Um, so obviously every student will be uh, delivering a motivational letter. Um, they, they will be able to put, let's say, their preferred uh, internship positions. But at the same time, on the other side, uh, the partners will also be telling us, okay, right now, you know, we're looking at doing a project in China or Mexico, so we, want, we need someone who has maybe that language skill, or right now maybe we want to develop um, a better financial strategy, so maybe if, if someone such as yourself, um, if this is the case, has a background in finance, then obviously that's, that makes more sense. Um, so at the end of the day, that's, that's the idea of, of the internship uh, process, uh, and I hope this answers your question. Perfect. Thank you, Christian. We have another question from the live chat. Yes, so this is a question from Alexandre Baronciani, and uh, I think that uh, Dimitri can come and answer this question. So the question is, is there a course in 
the academic program related to stadium operations and development of infrastructure among football stakeholders? Thank you, very good question. There have been uh, courses in the past about uh, stadium operations, and if I'm right, ECA is having a uh, an indication for its members, which is only accessible for ECA clubs to take part in, uh, which is partly about stadium operations. From ESMA point of view, it's never been a focus to really do education ourselves. So we have opted to cooperate with the FBA because we thought it's much more related to your core business as well as uh, to the expertise as, uh, which ESMA is having. Because it's not our daily business to do education, so we will ensure to maximize the matchmaking also in terms of internships, knowledge, uh, and everything how we can uh, move forward. So I hope that uh, answers the question. Dimitri, maybe would you like to expand on what, uh, what type of courses, uh, what, kind of, quite, what kind of topics will we have during the, the stadium operation classes at the FBA? Yeah, good question, Pedro, thank you. Um, the general focus of ASMA is about stadium um, development and renovation. It's about fan experience, safety and security, also linked to, to terrorism, which is uh, affecting our uh, industry sector. Um, pitch management, however, we think this is not the right tool to, to combine it with, uh, with the grass and everything of the playing field. Um, sustainability, because smart stadiums are getting a more vital part of our business to see three uh, neutral stadiums, etc. So the main focus will be linked to stadium development construction linked to safety, security, and mainly fan entertainment, hospitality, the operations which creates uh, revenue opportunities and to move forward with, uh, with the business. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dimitri, for clarifying it. We, we had other questions for exactly on that topic, so that will answer a lot of questions from, from the students. Now I have a, questions, a question from Italy. Giorgio, I see the program starts with an introduction, introduction week at Manchester. Is it mandatory to participate? I think Dorian can answer that. Hi, Giorgio. Um, yes and no. I mean, like, if you, if you want to, take, to put all the chances on your side to develop your career uh, in the football industry, you, you might <coughs> come to Soccer X. I mean, this intro week, you will, uh, you will learn a lot of stakeholders that, that, that are in the football industry. And um, it's, it's just an amazing event to develop, honestly, your, your portfolio of contacts, your knowledge uh, uh, as well, because there is a lot of super interesting panels. Um, in case of you cannot make it, um, we'll, ma we'll bring you a free ticket or a free entrance for the next Soccer X. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, it's not mandatory, but, but it's highly recommended. Thank you. Giorgio, go for my experience and don't miss Soccer X. It's probably one of the best uh, events you can go and, and get you, your foot into the industry. Now we have a question, well, quite targeted, I guess, uh, to, uh, to Dennis. Uh, this is uh, Alexis. Is the marketing classes, is the marketing class provided by Professor Tom going to be on the case of Borussia Dortmund only? <laughs> Dennis, I invite you to the floor to, to answer that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. um, definitely not. It's, um, we will look into all the venues uh, around the globe where um, like the best and the worst case has, uh, has have happened. And um, the digital cases, we do like a, a complete wrap up about the, the most important cases you can actually see. Uh, we will decide on that when it comes to the course because it's such a fast moving development. Um, there will be, of course, um, a focus on how we do things in, in Dortmund as well. But that's solely as a knowledge to dilute for the, for the on-campus project because um, you will be set in the, in the challenge to solve a problem, practically, and you will be judged by that. So it's, it's more than the BBB. <laughs> okay? Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. I think uh, it's obvious that you'll have the, the full scope of football during the marching class. A question from Ivory Coast. 
I, from Grandy, I can't afford the program. Do you have scholarships? I would ask Christian if you don't mind answering that question. Hi, Grandy. Thanks uh, for your question. Uh, very good question, obviously. Um, at the FBA, our idea is to help as many people as possible to, to reach their goals, uh, achieve their dreams, which obviously is to work in football. Um, and we understand that for a lot of people, it's not um, maybe easy to, to put up this sort of investment. Um, what we recommend in this case always is to apply anyway. Uh, give, you know, send us all your, all, all your in, in information. Um, or we also put uh, in the in the document that you would require financial assistance because uh, it's something that we evaluate on a case by case basis. Um, we obviously don't want to miss any great talents that we think can uh, you know create real positive change in this industry. Um, so first step, definitely uh, apply and, and let us know you know regarding your financial situation. And you know depending on how how motivated you are, how how, how badly you want. Uh, maybe you can try to be a bit proactive and also go to maybe the sports ministry of, uh, of Ivory Coast or the Football Federation um, and tell them that you know you want to do this course um, and maybe they will help you. So uh, um, I hope this answers your question and I hope uh, you'll, uh, you'll apply so that we can start looking at ways how to help you. Thank you, Chris. Marianne asked two questions here. In which format will, be, will the classes be given online? How often will the documents be released? I'll ask the first, this first question to, to Dorian, if you don't mind answering. Marianne. OK, so the idea of, uh, of the Football Business Academy is to mix um, theoretical classes online and on campus, so a part will be uh, obviously online, um, and the last two months will be uh, on campus here in Geneva. In which format uh, will the, the, the courses online will be given? Um, the idea is that every Sunday we will upload the course, the PDF course, um, on our platform, dedicated platform, only you will have access to it. So you will have a PDF document plus an explanatory video. Uh, between 30 and 45 minutes from the teacher that will explain exactly uh, the, um, the PDF documents and you will have uh, four to, to seven days before having um, a live chat with the, the teacher on, online as well and you will, you will have the chance to ask him every question uh, you might have rega regarding the course and the teacher will answer you um, so you have ten, ten courses per um, 10, 10 class per courses, uh, so 10 live chats, 10 PDF, and 10 explanatory video. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. If I may add on this, uh, Marianne, uh, I think as you heard from the professors um, and the importance of uh, innovation and, and with the globalization of technologies uh, in the world, especially in sports, uh, we at the FBA, we, we strive for innovation as well and uh, you will see that the platform we've created for this, uh, those online classes is, uh, if I may, a 3.0 platform um, which will facilitate um, and will um, put more value to your learning experience throughout the, the online classes. Now the second question from Marianne is, how will the professors provide support for students and how, when can, we, can students can contact them? Maybe we can take the the perspective of a professor for that. Maybe David, would you like to answer that? Sure. Uh, well, my understanding is, you know, uh, email, there are so many ways of communicating these days and it depends what you prefer. Uh, email would be the old fashioned way of uh, offering support and communication outside classes, but I'm quite a fan of WhatsApp actually. So that might work. I can imagine having a WhatsApp group uh, for my classes which would allow sharing of information as well as kind of conversation um, and I think part of the philosophy of um, the Football Business Academy is that the support shouldn't just be for the 10 weeks in the classroom but it's part of establishing a network um, for the rest of your career.
career in football. And certainly my experience with students on other courses in the past is they're still coming back to me via LinkedIn or Facebook or email. And uh, it's my pleasure to engage and offer what support I can, you know, not just in the 10 weeks, but over the years. Thank you very much, David. Now we have a, a question from Mario. When I look at the professors, I see that there's a majority of teachers coming from European big clubs. How can, you make sure, how can we make sure this is transferable to the realities of our countries? Mario is from Guatemala. Um, I guess he's worried about the, the reality of football in his country. Maybe Mai, uh, since you come from that region, would you like to, to, to answer that? Would you mind? Mario. Hola, Mario. Saludos desde Ginebra. Um, I think, uh, coming from Cuba, actually, um, I've jumped from Cuba, a very, very special environment in the world, in the Caribbean, into the sport industry internationally. I can tell you that it doesn't matter where the professors come from. It, what actually matters is what you learn. And I think it's applying all your learnings in, into what you do every day in your work. And I think the professors that we are seeing here have a huge variety of experiences, but also I sense a lot of global understanding. So I will not, if I was a student, I would not fear that. I actually did a master as well where the majority of my professors were also European. And I can tell you from my experience, going from that master, I went to work in the IOC and then at FIFA globally. So really, even if you come from Guatemala or from Cuba like I do, you still will have a chance to get professors that help you to tailor made whatever you love, whatever they teach you to your own reality and to help you in your career. So I hope this answers your question. And uh, as como una cubana te digo, que te puede ayudar muchísimo. Una perspectiva diferente. Muchas gracias, Maggi. That was very insightful. Uh, we have a lot of the actions in the live chat. Uh, Edward, would you like to? Yeah, so this is a question from Elliot Brown again. Uh, his question is, will accommodation be provided as part of the tuition fee for the eight-week module in Geneva. Okay, I'll take the shot and I'll answer that question. Uh, the answer is yes. Accommodation is included in the in the global fee you will pay for the for the twelve month um, program at the FBA. Um, if you ad well, accommodation will be paid for the last module in Geneva, and and during soccer X events as well. When you go to business events such as soccer X, accommodation will be will be included as well. So no, no extra charges for you on this site. Um, should you not need the accommodation, um, you can let us know and uh, you, can, uh, you can leave it to, uh, in your own place if you need. And another question from Thibaut Zyusha. Uh, his question is, is it a problem if I don't have a lot of work experience? Uh, would I be penalized by this? Is that Thibaut, did you say? Uh, Thibaut Zyusha. Well, Thibault, no, you will not be penalized. We actually want you to, to, to do the FBA so that you can get some experience and get out there in the market and, and, and pursue the, your dream career. So the, the good of the FBA is the mixity of the students that will be involved and uh, the fact that you'll be surrounded by people that have maybe a little experience and people that have a lot of experience will be much more insightful. So, um, so if, you are, if you have the right profile and the right motivations and the ambition, as well as the, all the requirements we've said before, you're very welcome to, to apply for the FBA and your lack of work experience will not be, um, um, you will not be impacted by this. Let's see what other questions do we have. We have uh, Risha from India asking how many business events pay to and what do we have to pay? 
Christian, do you want to enter that? And uh, yeah, please. Hi, Rishav. Thanks for your question. Um, so within the tuition fee of, of the FBA course, um, every student has uh, one business event included. So, uh, for example, the, the Soccer Race Global Convention in Manchester, or as um, Dorian previously said, if you, if you cannot make it to that one, you will automatically still um, be guaranteed one participation at another event in a different location at a different time of your uh, convenience. <coughs> um, what was the second part of the question? How much? How much? Ah, yeah, so, um, and then obviously, if you want to pick the opportunity um, to go to more events, uh, obviously, thanks to our partnership with, with SoccerX as well as ESMA, you will be able to, to go to these events at a, at a much better rate. And uh, we, we believe that you know, these types of investments are, are definitely uh, to the benefit of the, of the students who really want to break into the industry, um, make as many contacts as possible, learn from as many as possible. Um, so that's why we, we've created this combination of having at least one business ex uh, event included in the program. And if you want to go to more, uh, we'll help you to, to get a better rate. How much? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the event. Eh? We had uh, another question from Panagiotis, who already asked a question. Um, he would like more details on the student business project and on the field trips, which joins the question from Agatha. What kind of benefits do, do, do the field trips bring to the students? In which type of organization do they all happen in Switzerland? Um, regarding the student business project, maybe Dorian can answer, and then uh, Christian will answer the, the field trips. <laughs> Or maybe Dimi, Dimitri for the field trips. All right, um, the student business project. Okay, you will have the chance to work with company, football-related company, um, and they will ask you to do um, a consulting mission for them. So obviously, you will have the chance during two months to give everything you can with a group of with the, your group work to prove to this industry that the, what you what you're worth, and and I'm sure that if everything goes well will have a chance maybe to get hired. So it's always a good opportunity uh, to show your skills, to develop your contacts, uh, and to prove what you're worth. So for me, it's, I think it's one of the best things you can do during the, 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 the Football Business Academy program. But maybe Dimi uh, for the field trips one. So for um, intake one, we will do two field trips, and a field trip includes three-day visit to football clubs about specific topics. For example, we will go to London to visit uh, four or five clubs who bring a story about fan entertainment, uh, fan engagement, fan intelligence with their cases, workshop setup. We will visit the clubs, we will have uh, meetings with them, with the right people, so you really will have, uh, you will be challenged and you will have the right interaction. And we will combine this with one life uh, experience event. So it probably will be a football game or a rugby game. Maybe, Christian, you want to add something on the other field trips, which are linked to that. For intake two, it will be combined with Erasmus Summit and with one uh, field trip, because it's linked to the, the combination of uh, courses you have in uh, Switzerland. Thank you, Dimi. Um, so yeah, so regarding the, the whole stadium experience, etc., cetera, you obviously wanted to make sure that, thanks to the network and, and knowledge of ESMA, um, you get at least two, two field trips related to that area. Um, and then obviously in addition, uh, we will have some other uh, field trips both in Switzerland and other European countries related to other areas. So maybe we can visit um, the likes of EPFL, ECA, FIFA, UEFA, which are obviously here in Switzerland to learn more about uh, football governance, for example. Um, at the same time, maybe we can go to, to Lisbon or, or Madrid to, to, to do another type of um, field visit more focused on, on the marketing side, the commercial side. So in total, we will have around five to six uh, field trips per, per intake. Thank you very much, Christian and, and Dimitri. The last questions we ha question we have is from, from here, from Switzerland. Nico, I got accepted in a similar program before I heard about the FBA. 
but I got really interested by this one. How long is the application process and how long does it take to receive a confirmation? I could take that shot, but I will let our CEO Dorian answer that question. Okay, thank you, Nico, for that question. Um, thanks for, thanks for, for thinking about us. The application process, as I, I, I said before, it's, it takes approximately uh, three weeks. Um, we receive, so you go to our website, you can subscribe uh, and, and fill all the documents needed, which is um, obviously your grades from your bachelor or master degree you had, the English TOEFL or IELTS, your CV, a, letter, a motivation letter, and a copy of your passports. Then we, we take a few days uh, internally to discuss your profile. Then um, we, you will have an interview with one or, with one or two members uh, of the uh, of the administ administration staff. And then if you pass this test uh, as well, we will put you in touch with uh, one of our teacher who will validate uh, your candidature. And if the teacher validates your candidature, you're in. So, Nico, take your chance, apply, and then you'll see what you prefer, but I'm pretty sure you'll choose the FBA. That was the last question. I will bring, give back the floor to, to Megan. Thank you very much to all the students for the questions. Okay. So this now concludes our webinar. Thank you everyone for watching, tuning in, sending in all your questions. Um, we hope it's answered all your questions. If you didn't manage to make it to the webinar and you still have more questions, send any emails to info at the hyphen fba.com. Um, or visit the website as well. Um, thank you very much, everyone.